Welcome in this video on Effective Sensor Site Management. In this segment, we'll delve into some useful tips regarding sensor placement, removing sensors, sensor allergy, and provide a list of do's and don'ts for sensor maintenance. 1. Optimal Sensor Site Management The accuracy of sensor readings can significantly depend on where they're placed. The optimal results with freestyle Libra sensors are achieved when they are positioned on the back of the upper arms. Some individuals use them in alternative off-label locations. However, it has been observed that placing the freestyle Libra sensor on the abdomen resulted in lower accuracy compared to the thigh, which, in turn, was slightly less accurate than the upper arm placement. Dexcom sensors perform optimally on the upper arms but can also be placed on the abdomen. For those under 18, buttocks placement is also permissible. Guardian sensors similarly provide top accuracy on the upper arms and can be positioned on the abdomen. Practically, many users also place them on the thigh, as this seems to cause less bleeding in some people. Avoid repeated use of the same sensor site to prevent local skin inflammation. Change the sensor site with each new sensor. Steer clear of placing the sensor under a belt, waistband, safety belt, near bones, the navel, irritated skin, scars, tattoos, or areas of lipid dystrophy. Be wary of areas prone to bumping, pushing, or laying on while sleeping. Pressure on the sensor during sleep can cause compression, leading to false low readings. 2. Ensuring sensor longevity To make your sensor adhere better, try the following tips. Clean and dry the skin thoroughly. Shaving and washing with soap and water can remove oils that prevent proper adhesion. Allow the area to air dry before sensor application. Avoid applying sunscreen or insect repellent around the sensor location. To improve sensor adhesion, it may be beneficial to disinfect the skin prior to sensor placement. Wait until the skin is dry before inserting the sensor. If the skin is still moist from the alcohol wipe, the sensor may not adhere properly. It is worth mentioning that using alcohol for disinfection is not recommended as it can affect the accuracy of the sensor readings and cause values to drift. In the summer, consider applying deodorant first to minimize localized sweating. Some people find using additional glues like skin tack or convene prep beneficial. Let the adhesive dry completely before sensor insertion. On the other hand, some people may have an allergic reaction to skin tack and this is sometimes mistakenly associated with an allergy to the sensor itself, rather than the wipes. After sensor placement, make sure to rub the adhesive well onto the skin to enhance its adherence. Dexcom and Guardian sensors typically come with free overtape included in the package. However, the Libra sensor usually does not require additional overtape. Several companies offer overtape with custom sizes, adorable designs, and high-quality materials. However, it is sometimes recommended not to fully cover the transmitter to avoid potential interference with Bluetooth connectivity. If you place a small piece of tissue between the sensor and the overtape, you can easily replace the overtape without having to replace the sensor itself. This method can provide convenience and flexibility in maintaining the sensor's adhesion. If the side of the overtape starts to come off, you can use long-form medical tape to secure it in place. Additionally, there are sensor holders available that can effectively keep the sensor securely positioned during daily activities. 3. Careful Sensor Removal Some users find their sensors adhere too securely. Here are some tips for sensor removal. Remove the sensor slowly, keeping it parallel to the skin as much as possible. You may use medical adhesive solvent or cotton wool soaked in baby oil around the sensor. This can help make it easier to remove the sensor. Avoid sensor removal post-shower. Heat and humidity enhance adhesive stickiness, making it harder to remove. Adhesive residues can be removed using specialized products like Remove Wipes, Tackaway, or Limousin Plaster Remover. Baby oil or massage oil can also be used. 4. Handling Sensor Allergies up to a third of sensor users may experience some form of skin reaction. It is crucial to ask about these reactions and provide appropriate tips to ensure optimal sensor use. Here are some recommendations. Prior to sensor insertion, ensure the skin is properly cleaned. If you are prone to irritation, it is advisable to avoid alcohol wipes as they can exacerbate the reaction. Instead, consider using skin prep wipes, allowing them to dry adequately before placing the sensor. 
If skin reactions persist, you can try using cortisone nasal spray before sensor insertion. Allow these substances to dry thoroughly before placing the sensor on the skin. Allergies often stem from the adhesive patches used with the sensor. If you experience ongoing irritation, switching to a different type of patch may be beneficial. Experimenting with alternative options can help identify a patch that suits your skin better. In cases where irritation occurs, applying cortisone ointment can help expedite skin healing. 5. Contact Irritation versus Contact Allergy When addressing allergies, it's important to assess the severity of the reaction and examine any visible rash. While most cases involve contact irritation, 5-8% to of sensor users may experience contact allergy. In such instances, it's crucial to avoid the allergen to prevent further complications. Contact allergy is an immune system hypersensitivity response triggered by an adhesive component. It manifests as a delayed allergic reaction occurring weeks, months, or years after initial contact. Subsequent exposures lead to an immediate reaction within 1-2 to two hours, intensifying with each occurrence. Symptoms include intense itching, vesicles, papules, skin swelling, and using fluid. The reaction may extend beyond the exposed area. Contact irritation, on the other hand, results from non-immune-mediated inflammation due to direct skin damage caused by chemical or mechanical factors. Heat, humidity, and exposure duration can worsen the symptoms, which typically include a burning sensation, redness, peeling, and crusting. Distinguishing between contact allergy and irritation can be challenging, and the presence of irritation does not rule out the possibility of an allergic response. Skin damage from irritation can increase antigen exposure, potentially triggering an allergic reaction. If needed, it is advisable to consult a specialized dermatologist for further evaluation and guidance in such cases. They can provide expert insight and help determine the appropriate course of action. Conducting a patch test can aid in distinguishing between the two conditions. This involves evaluating common allergens like colophonium, isoborn allacrylate, and methylacrylides. While some device manufacturers disclose known allergens, changes in adhesive formulations without user notification can introduce uncertainty. 6. Do's and Don'ts If you experience persistent discomfort after sensor insertion, it could be in contact with a nerve or muscle. It's best to remove it and insert a new one. When setting sensor, it is recommended not to press the inserter too firmly in order to avoid bleeding. The sensor wire should not be inserted into a blood vessel, so if the sensor site bleeds profusely it's appropriate to change the sensor and replace it, and report to the company to obtain a free-of-charge replacement sensor. If recurring sensor errors occur, try selecting a different body site to set your sensor. If you see a sensor error on your glucose monitor, you can try a simple fix. Drink some water to stay hydrated and gently massage the area around the sensor. These steps might help resolve the error and get your monitor working properly again. Bluetooth connection may be disturbed by other nearby Bluetooth devices such as blood glucose meters, headsets, tablets or kitchen devices such as microwave ovens or ceramic hobs. In this case your receiver will not display any sensor glucose values. When Bluetooth connection is restabilized the data is backfilled. Armed with this valuable information, you are now equipped to handle common sensor issues, including optimal sensor placement, secure removal, addressing loosening, and managing allergies. In our upcoming video on sensors, we will dive into the interpretation of CGM reports, providing you with the knowledge to make informed decisions based on the abundance of data available. With this understanding, you can harness the power of CGM to effectively manage diabetes and take control of your health.